Most people never get the sale because they don't ask for it. They don't know what to say. They don't know when to ask for it. They have no idea what's going on. They just put it out there and hope that the universe will somehow bring them in clients. Is that you? Are you too afraid to ask for the sale or worse? Do you not even know how to or when to close that deal? You're struggling with sales, and so that's probably playing all kinds of things on your psyche. You, you might be saying like, I'm not a salesperson and I'm not born with a natural talent. None of that stuff's true. Because the first truth in this is that sales is a deeply personal thing. What works for me, my process, my abilities was developed for me. What you need to recognize is that you can't take my process and just run with it. You need to develop the process that works for you. And this is demonstrated the best in big sales organizations where everybody's given a script and expected to react the same way. The people who do the best in each of these types of areas are the outliers. The people who tweak things and change things and make it their own and ignore the status quo and do whatever they need to do to play into their gifts, their natural gifts and their natural abilities. Those are the people who totally crush it. And then the organization's mad because it can't be replicated. You know, we're not robots. So if you're struggling with sales, recognize that we all have at some point, we all do. And it's about finding what works for you more so than waking up one day and becoming a salesperson. So how do you do that? Of course, the first is listening. Listening to what people are saying, letting them speak, being thoughtful in your response and not just trying to like, let's direct them here or let's direct them there. Really listen to people. Listen to people and hear what they have to say and they will share all kinds of things. And whether you're trying to sell someone, you know, a new cell phone, or you're trying to sell uh, a huge government contract through an RFP, the first place to start is to actually listen. Because once you listen, you will understand. You'll be able to think, if I were in this situation, what would, what would I do for myself? And then you can start to respond in a really confident and clear way. So first, listen. Second, the more you do this, the more you'll come to realize that there are only five or six or seven challenges that everyone face. And so in my industry, right, I run a marketing agency. And so there was this time where people kept coming to us and saying like, ah, we need to do employee engagement. We like our team, our big team needs to love our brand more. And what I realized after the first time and then the second time, and then the third time that this came up, I, I, I recognized that each person who was coming to me was a team that was under a new brand because they grew really fast through acquisition. So if you go from 5,000 employees to 40,000 employees by buying up a bunch of different companies, of course the staff isn't gonna be aligned with the brand. Of course they're not gonna love the team that they're a part of. So by listening and then starting to recognize that, oh, this is weird. The third time that I'm talking to someone about employee engagement, I've noticed this pattern. Every time after that, when I sat down with an organization that was a little bit big, and they say, we really need to you know, engage our employees, I would say, let me ask you a question. Have you grown through acquisition recently? And they'd go, yeah. And I go like, this is really common. So let me walk you through a few of the things that we've noticed and a few of the things, and I can slip right away into like, hey, I know what we're talking about here. You know, through repetition, through recognition, you're gonna realize the shortcuts you can take, and this is huge. This is powerful because one, you can shortcut stuff if you want to. You can act as a guide for them. You can answer the questions that they didn't even know to ask because other people have asked it, you've remembered it, and now you're saying, hey, do you ever feel this way? Do you ever worry about this? Do you ever think about this? Is this a concern for you? And you're just gonna get better at this. Like there's, you do this and you will get better at it. The third thing, I'm suggesting that you simplify everything, remove the friction, make things really simple, and look at each step, speak in simple terms, just help people move through this journey, explain in simple ways why you're asking the questions you're asking, how the contract works in simple language. To me, that's, that is simplicity, right? Just being that open and that transparent. Find whatever your version of simplicity is. And then the last thing that I would suggest is recognize that everybody is different. Some people are ready to go. Some people buy for status or ego. Some people want five or six conversations. Others, how do we make this happen? Don't, don't overcomplicate it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, I need this done. Some people, this is the most important decision that they're making. A lot of 
sales people, a lot of entrepreneurs want to create a process, right? I want to create a process. And I think structure and process is good. Build it so that way it works for them. Give people more time if they need it or less time, more detail if they need it or less detail, more value or less value, whatever it is that you can do, give that to them because that will increase your close rate. Special bonus point, don't ask for the sale until the prospect is ready to close. This is the problem with the process. This is why I say you have to accordion in and out. If I say, Steve, I give you one meeting. Are you gonna go or not? Steve's like, I just, I just, don't, I just don't know. I have, to, I have to talk to my wife or I have to look at my finances and I'm just worried or I'm just not sure about this. And I said like, well, that's it. Are you gonna go or not? That, that's like too strictly following the process. Because the truth is that people start here and they don't know anything. And as time goes on, they learn more, they get more emotionally invested, they start to want it, and then we see a fall off. The thing is, if you follow a process that assumes that people move from here to here to here to here to here, and this is the window where you're most likely to close them, but their, their, their bar is stretched out much further, then you're trying to force the sale for someone who is maybe a few minutes, or a few questions, or a few days, or a few weeks before they're even ready. And you're saying like, are you ready to buy? Or if you wait until it's too late, they may have cooled off, they may have lost interest in it because it's an emotional decision. So you have to find the right moment. And the right way to do this is through trial closing. As you're speaking to people, asking questions that indicate whether they're willing to move forward or not. You can't just assume that people are ready to close when you say they are. So the way you do this in a service-based company is to ask questions around like, um, like how, how fast are you looking to move? Like if you've ever bought a car, you'll notice that every car salesperson says, when are you looking at getting in your new car? That's a trial close question. You're just trying to get a sense of where the person's at. If you ask them cash or financing, what other vehicles or manufacturers are you looking at? All of these types of questions help indicate whether someone's ready to move forward or not. Eventually, you're gonna to wanna to ask, listen, we have this sale going on, we have this thing going on. And so you might be in like a professional services firm like ours, a marketing agency. We ask like, hey, when do we need to be in market? Like when's the campaign launching? Do you have a budget set aside for this already? You know, at a certain point in the process, uh, fantastic. So it sounds like we're moving forward with this, which is awesome. What do you need to be able to get this approved? If they are reserved, if they hold their cards close to the chest, I will then ask what is going on. Oh, you, you need a few more weeks? What, what's happening? Are you mid process of interviewing a bunch of different companies? I thought this was something we were definitely doing, whether it's with us or with someone else. You can handle these objections. And then the last thing to do is just to ask for it, right? When I'm sitting with someone and I say, oh great, we're gonna put the contract together, fantastic. I'm so excited to move forward with you. Is this a project that's gonna happen? You can work with us, you can work with someone else, but you need to do this. Are we gonna make this happen? You need to actually just ask the person. Without that little push, without that little ask, things disappear. They, you know, you go off, they talk to their cousin, things drag out, they lose interest, they were excited and they're not excited, they start to worry about how much the money is and they're not sure about it. And, uh, and, so, and so that's why you need to just come out and ask for it. No one will be offended. No one will accuse you of being a salesperson if you do it with tact and with care and when it's the right time to do it. So just go ahead and try. It will change everything in terms of your revenue, your profits, your sales. It'll change your business. They don't force the issue. They're super polite. They're super nice. They wait for people to come to them. Is that you? Is that you? Is it? If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.